Welcome to Mental Fitness with Michelle. I'm Michelle. On today's video, we're gonna talk about Control-Alt-Delete. Now I know that most of you are sitting in front of a computer right now and have been sitting in front of a computer for the last four, five, maybe six weeks in your home. So Control-Alt-Delete is very familiar to you. Today, we're gonna to talk about Control-Alt-Delete in just a little bit different way. So Control, what does Control stand for? Control your reactions. Now, how do I do that, Michelle? I just, like, how do I control my reactions? Well, um, when something comes at you, irritating you, um, disrupting you, creating a distraction, maybe something is coming at you that causes you anger or sadness or fear, you have the right to choose how to react. What? I know, I know it's brand new information. Um, you don't get the right to choose how to feel because feelings just happen, they are, right? But you do have the right to figure out how you want to react. Um, when you're angry, do you have to throw something? Sure, you can throw a basketball, but do you have to throw something? No, you do not have to throw something. Um, you can control your reaction. You can take a deep breath. You can walk around the block. When you become sad, do you have to cry? No, you do not have to cry. You can talk to somebody. You can eat a pint of ice cream, <laughs> which is what I do. Um, you can go for a walk. You can walk around the block. You have lots of options of what you can do when you get when you feel sad or you feel angry or you feel hurt. But you have to decide what your reaction is going to be. Taking just a few seconds, even if it's just a count of 10, before you react to something allows you to purposefully react as opposed to automatically react. Maybe we have gotten ourselves into some bad habits throughout the years and we automatically react. Maybe somebody, you know, gets under our skin and as soon as they push that button, we snap. Maybe we throw things, um, scream, say, say bad words, um, eat the pint of ice cream, um, and do things that are destructive. Guess what? Most of those things that we do are destructive to ourselves. Um, we are self-destroying because we did not take those in few seconds to decide how to react. So controlling your reactions, especially in a time of stress, like a pandemic, um, is very, very important. Um, I, you have to be able to stop when you know and notice what your feelings are prior to reacting. If you do not like the result of your actions, you know that next time you need to stop and identify that feeling, what has caused you to feel a certain type of way before you react. Count to 10. It's very simple. Walk away. Um, go take a break. Maybe you just need to breathe. Maybe you need to get a journal out and start writing, but control your reactions. Next one. Alter your perspective. So how can we preview, preview what emotion we might have? Maybe we have to alter our perspective before the emotion happens. How can we do that? Well, a lot of people like to call that reframing. Um, and basically what it is, is you just take uh, whatever's going on around you and instead of seeing it one way, you see it a different way. Okay, that sounds a little too simple. Um, let me give you an example. So I could be sitting here going, I just want to travel and I can't go anywhere because they, whoever they are, won't let me and I can't get on a plane. And so I have that perspective and I feel trapped and I feel sad and I have all these emotions, right? And I want to react in a rebellious way and I want to, you know, defy all of um, the laws and whatever, but I know that I'll have consequences. So how can I reframe that? Well, I can reframe that by telling myself, this too shall pass. This is a small amount of time that I am unable to travel. It's been two, maybe three months that I haven't been able to go to another country. Are you kidding me? Like out of how many years I've been alive, two or three months, maybe even all the way to December, even if it's a whole year, out of all the years I've been alive, uh, I can't go travel. That's a tiny amount of time. It really is. Think about you know, being pregnant. When I was pregnant, I was pregnant for nine and a half, 10 months, right? Um, and I felt like, gosh, this baby's never gonna come. I'm gonna be pregnant forever. I remember even crying and telling my mom, like, I'm gonna be pregnant forever. I'm never gonna have this baby. And she would giggle because she knew I was gonna have the baby, right? Eventually, um, it was gonna happen. 
Um, and when it did, it did. And now the baby's 17 and I barely remember being pregnant. It was like yesterday that I was pregnant and it's been 17 years. Um, and so, and it's just such a blip on my um, timeline of all of my life, right? Same thing with this. Yeah, it may feel like you're stuck in the house right now, but really reframe and get some perspective. It's not even half a school year, right? Um, and you remember how long you felt like you were in school back when you were in high school or elementary school or middle school, and you couldn't wait to get to the next grade. We're talking, these kids have only been out of school like six weeks. I mean, it's like a month and a half. It's not that long. So you got to reframe and tell yourself, this too shall pass, and it's not that big a deal. Reframe and change your perspective. If you have to talk to somebody else and maybe get their perspective to help you change your perspective, do that. Um, if you need to write it down and then figure out a different way to say that, that's a great idea. It's a really good practice. Do that too. I highly recommend that people talk things out and or write them down to get everything out in the open. Sometimes you don't even know how you're feeling until you tell somebody else. Sometimes you don't know how you're feeling until you write it down and then reread it and go, all right, that was weird. I can't believe I felt like that. Um, has anybody ever had a diary that they had when they were like in middle school or high school and now that they're adult, they went back and looked at that diary and thought, how silly are, 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 it was I then? You know, what kind of things, were, what was I thinking, right? You're so different now and that was only five years ago or 10 years ago. Um, so change your perspective. Um, time changes perspective. Talking it over with other people changes perspective. Writing it down and rewriting it in a different way helps to change perspective. Um, and getting some distance from it helps to change perspective, okay? Um, and last, delete the negativity. Oh my goodness, delete the negativity. And this is all, there's all kinds of negativity around us, especially right now. Um, number one source of negativity, the television set, um, all the news, uh, the Facebook feeds, all the internet posts, all that stuff that's coming at you. We can't do this. Oh my God, look at this happen. All these people have, you know, uh, this disease. Nobody can travel. People are protesting. Negative, negative, negative. Turn it off. Walk away from it. Get away from that negativity. Other sources of negativity, friends and family members. When friends and family members, you talk to them on a daily basis and you want to get to them with comfort and, and you, you are, they're familiar to you, um, but when they continuously send you over and over again, oh, this negative thing, or oh my God, can you believe this? Or man, this is sucks, or this is terrible, or blah, blah, blah. They are perpetuating your cycle of ne negativity and you need to lessen the amount of time that you're talking to them or cut them off all completely. Maybe you need new friends. Maybe you need to reach out to that positive friend and spend more time talking to them. I know it doesn't feel as good because negativity um, is, is more attractive. It feels like, you know, you get yourself like all thrills, uh, all thrilled up because of negativity. Everybody likes, oh, the bad thing and the gossip and the whatever, but you forget what that's actually doing to your brain. Um, when you absorb negativity or when you um, continue it uh, to talk to other people in a negative way, you're actually causing yourself to be in a depressed, repressed kind of state. It puts pressure on you. It causes you to feel sad or feel slower um, due to the fact that you are perpetuating negativity in your life. You have to change the synapses or the way that your brain thinks to enjoy the positive. It's not a fast process, but it is a process that's doable. And how do I change the way I think from negativity to positivity? I'm so, so glad you asked. I really am. Um, upstairs, I have a dressing room where I get dressed every day and there's a big mirror in there. And I fill that mirror all around the sides with positive affirmations, things about me. I know it's not bragging because it's just me that's looking at it. I'm not telling anybody, I'm not like, hey, look at me. Um, but I am reminding myself, of all the accomplishments that I've had, um, all the smart things that I've done, the things that I have succeeded in, all the countries that I've gotten to visit, all the friends that have loved me and taught me things, um, my family members that have loved me and taught me things, um, the uh, just the successes that I've had in life and what I can become. I remind myself every day what I can become. I remind myself to learn and to be better 
um, so that I can find better things for my life. Um, so in getting rid of negativity, you're going to turn off the negative source, get it away from it. You're going to stop the cycle in the beginning. But if you let it con continue and you're past the stopping the cycle in the beginning, then you need to positive self-talk. You have to identify that there's negativity so that you can positively self-talk. So you're going to stop the negativity at the source. You're going to identify the negativity so that you can positively self-talk. And when you positively self-talk, how do you do that? Again, that's the journal. That's filling your mind with things that are positive and what you can be doing in the future. Um, what you've done and succeeded at, the obstacles that you've overcome in the past. So today on Mental Fitness with Michelle, we have talked about control, alt, delete. Control, alt, delete. You know exactly what that looks like on your computer and now you know what it looks like in your brain. See you next time on Mental Fitness with Michelle.